How is the event so far? Yeah. You're, you're kind of getting everything, you know, serious, right, uh, but also jokes. We got everything for you today. Uh, my name is Jelani Sam, the Executive Director of CARE Minnesota, and it's a, my privilege and honor really to thank all of you for being here today, to showing up today, to driving from your home, to taking this Saturday to be here, uh, and that is a tremendous, uh, it means a lot to us, to the community, to the Muslim community here today. Uh, for all the Muslims, if you're in the house, can you raise your hand? Hey. All right. MashaAllah. One of the reporters was asking me, it looks like everybody from Minnesota, the reflection of Minnesota is here. And that is true. Islamophobia is not new, as you watch the video. It's a part of history of religious intolerance, ignorance, among other things. Today, many of our friends, our neighbors, are being misled, misinformed. They're also raising their anxiety level, and we're starting to see hate crimes. This past week alone, last Saturday, we had a Muslim woman in Moorhead, Minnesota, who was followed, not allowed to actually enter the store, then followed as a gentleman was trying to tell her to remove her hijab. Just a few days ago, my close friend who actually got me these glasses, by the way, these are really cool glasses. <laughs> he has a, 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 an eyewear company right on Uptown, up, Uptown Eyewear. And his wife was followed for seven to eight minutes in Uptown. When she parked, she tried to park, and this couple will not allow her. And they started to sell obscenities, make her feel uncomfortable while she had her one-year-old. And threatened her to rip off her face if she sees them again. As difficult as these sound, this is why you're here today. This is why you chose this morning and this event to pay a ticket to be here from different parts of the state of Minnesota. Not everybody is here from the Twin Cities. By the way, there's a, a great delegation from Mankato. Where are you guys at? Hey, Mankato. And others from St. Cloud and Wilmer and Fairbault. And since I've been traveling across the state talking about Islamophobia the last two years particularly, I keep confronting the same type of people who are misinformed, but one thing is interesting. In St. Cloud, I gave a presentation about Islamophobia in 2015. And as I was starting the presentation, a man came up and I was like right at the lectern, for example. And he said, I have a question for you. I have a question for you. And he was very forceful. And I was like, well, you'll get your answer. You know, let me just set up the laptop. And there will be time for question and answer. And Later on, I found this gentleman, and I asked him, I said, did you get your question answered? And he said, yes, you did, in the presentation. He said that he was an Irish Catholic. And Irish Catholics, he remembers the same fears, the same language using to, that's being used against Muslims today. And he said, I understand now what is happening. And that is really what we need today. We need to talk to each other. We need to be able to reach one another and allow each other to listen to each other, but also allow each other to, to, to have that opportunity in conversation. So many of you in this room today, since the election, have been calling many of the Muslim organizations. You said, hey, I'm here. I want to do something. I don't want to just be a bystander. I want to actually make a difference, and I want to make that commitment. And so we put this event together to kick off a really ambitious and doable campaign. How many of you got one of these little white, uh, I mean, uh, yellow forms? You got them all? All right, pull them out. So we've got 10 ways to get involved. There's a lot of ways we can get involved, but there's 10 ways, and I want to just quickly go through them. Number one, there's a lot of creative people. 
people who draw, people who are artists, people who get on stages, people who are videographers, people who do crazy things, right? They could be the solution. We want to organize that group of people. The second thing is change. Change the narrative. Today, when we talk about terrorism, what people don't realize is 99% of the victims of global terrorism today are Muslim. Yet we sympathize and we elevate the perpetrators of terrorism. And that's unfortunate, but we have to be as a society to change that narrative. And so this, if you sign up to be part of this, will give you little tips here and there to be present in social media. I've been giving this advice I call the dot response. On social media today, those who try to put fear and mislead are very energetic. They throw their copy paste their lines into every single article. You've seen them. You've looked at those. You get confused. You're frustrated. And you say, what is the response here? What I'm telling you is the response could be very simple. A smiley face, if you've got no time to write nice words. Even if you have no time for a smiley face, I don't even know how you would make it. Semicolon and then what is it? Parentheses, right? Right, the old way. Even if you don't have a time to do a smiley face, most comment uh, uh, submissions will allow you to put a dot. If every one of us did that on a regular basis, when we see a, a comment that is hurtful, comment that's untrue, comment that, that may not require response. If we did that, we can drown those people out. Dr. King said something very important. He said, in the end, we'll not remember the words of our enemy, but we'll remember the silence of our friends. And today, we are very silent on social media. Many of us on the left want to come up with a logical way to response, right? Like, what, what should I say on this? There's so much here. You, you, you know, you know, come on. You don't have to think very logically. A bigoted statement, a racist statement does not require pure, pure logic. It requires love. It requires changing the subject. It requires being present. And that's what change is about, changing the narrative. The second one is take action. Many of you want to protest. You want to march. How many of you were there at the Women's March? Oh, look at that. Look at that. The entire Women's March is here today. <laughs> And by the way, speaking of the Women's March, I know we filled the, uh, the downstairs, but I encourage all of you today as you're walking in and out of this event, please go upstairs. There are wonderful sponsors of this event who have tables and information. You can chat people up. So big, please do that as well. So we're going to do different types of marches. We're not just going to do the same ones we've done before. We're going to be more creative. We're going to try to get in front of as many places as possible. The second one is crisis response. Right now, incidents of hate crimes have skyrocketed. 33 mosques have been attacked nationwide, have been targeted nationwide in this country. Last year at this time, which was one of the highest years, by the way, was 16. We've already doubled that number by March this year. In Minnesota, we're seeing really numbers we have not seen before. And so we need a group of people that will respond to those incidents. We'll comfort those people. We'll give them and support them in the way they need. And more than you think about it. Every time you see these crimes happening, you think about it. And by the way, they're happening to everybody. To the Jewish community, to the African American community, to the Asian community. Right here in Minnesota, the Delano incident many of you are familiar with. A lot of people are not familiar with the man who was threatened with a machete in St. Cloud. African American gentleman. A lot of people are, not, are familiar with the, the bombing threats of the Jewish community centers. But we need people like you who can respond immediately. And I know that's something many of you would be interested in. Sharing an idea. Some of you are here are bright bulbed, like that bulb right there. We can use those ideas. Hosting a conversation. This is critical. This is actually one of the most important things that has to be done. We have to talk to the people who we think need to be talked to. We got so comfortable talking to people who agree with us. And so we have to find ways to listen to those individuals who we may disagree or may have been misinformed. 
but we have to start. And we want people to lead those conversations, host a conversation in their bookstore, in their library, and many other things. To be an advocate is critical. Many of you want to do more, want to be educated and to, and, and to be an advocate. Invite a speaker. And we have IRG and, 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 and CARE and many Muslim organizations that can come to where you're at and speak to different communities. Volunteer. Be placed in different areas that care. And finally, the most important thing, every revolution needs money. Every great movement needs money. And we need to, your support. This is what we're doing today. We already have probably 1,500 people in the room. So we already have 1,500. We only need 8,500. All right? And guess what? If every single one of you who is here talks to six people, convinces six people, we'll be done next week. I'm being serious. So that's how we're going to get it. We're going to get 10,000 people to challenge hatred and bigotry. We're going to get 10,000 people to stand up for Minnesotans wherever they are. We're going to get 10,000 people to say no. We're going to get 10,000 people to resist. And we're going to start that today. Thank you.